Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to another episode of Planetes. We're in episode 3, Return Trajectory. Last time was a Hachi-focused episode mainly. We got a little backstory about his um, dreams of end ambitions and, you know, his very clutch save. Um, actually, like, saving a passenger liner in space, so that would have could have could have would have um ended in disaster so cool cool hachi hachi stuff i do feel like like there's so much focus on hachi in the opening ending i do feel like he's he's definitely the male male lead um but i still think uh what's her name <laughs> i don't even remember her name is it uh nauko nauko so I think it's not though. I mean, we'll we'll know in a sec. I think she'll still be like the female lead, and it'll be both of them. Though obviously, um, we'll that we'll probably get like a an episode with some focus on each character to develop them a bit. Um, but yeah, I, I'm excited. I'm excited. Um, probably gonna be only one episode this week, and it'll tra it'll transition to a weekly show unless I do have the time. But uh. For um, the week this is uploaded, nah. I guess it, there will probably be some. There's time off in December, end of December, but uh, I might be busy. I don't know. We'll see. Um, it's a blast to, to watch this, of course. But I, uh, it's it's a little different than like what, what we're doing now with Natsume, where you know since I get to watch it like three times a week, um. I'm a little more familiar, like, I, I'm a little hazy right now on some of the details. Um, uh, harder to learn names, which is a problem for me since I'm very forgetful, but regardless, I'm just excited to uh, continue. You know, we're on big episode three. A lot of people say three episodes, or they give three episodes for a series before dropping it. Um, I never really follow that rule. Sadly, I'm cursed for just fully watching a series. I, I rarely drop them. Um, I drop them more now that I'm older, but especially when I was super into anime. Like, if it's if it's shit, I'm like, well, bad role, but we're trying to finish it anyways. Um, but obviously, this is not shit. This is... I mean, you, you don't call this good shit, because this is really a really fun experience. So far. So far. Uh, who knows? Maybe it, it'll, it'll dive down and become hated even though literally everyone or the people who watch it love it mainly i think um anyways yes let, let, let's continue um you know get your snacks drinks ready i got some coke and whiskey um of course you know special occasion watching this every week so i'd like to get a little sauced up <laughs> um but yeah, yeah, episode three, uh, get your copy of the episode ready. I'm using the OZC release, um, if you want the exact copy. Otherwise, it probably doesn't matter. My episode length is 25 minutes and one second. And at the end of the episode, we'll talk about it. Um, look up a voice actor, etc., etc. Little, little mini review should be fun. But yeah, let's start this episode in three. Wait, don't, let me check. That I made sure the the audio and subtitles are set because my default, at least this release for default, is um is in dub. So we we are watching this in sub. If you haven't noticed, I I mean you probably should have if you've uh, seen the end of the episode reviews since I uh, review their Japanese voice actor. Unless I I, I would probably review their English, it wouldn't really make sense otherwise, right? But yeah, let's let's start this episode in three, two, one, go. Uh, yes, a little recap on what the series is about. Debris clearers. Twenty seventy five. Still a long ways away, huh? Ah, yes. Well, I like that, man. All those older civilizations pictures of uh, space. 
it's a cool series, man. Especially how it feels kind of more realistic. Taking a more realistic approach, usually, than usual anime. And even this intro showing what I assume is real historic events. It's a cool vibe. And Hachi and Naoko's, I hope her name is Naoko, um, relationship is, it has been improving generally, so, says so see, like from episode one to episode two, it's, it was a pretty big step, so... But that doesn't even spell out planet as. Or maybe it does. <laughs> Phase 3, return trajectory. Ooh, look at that CG. Yeah, just reading Hustler in the open. Ah, uh, she is writing the apology. It was her fault, to be honest. Hachi just kind of saved the day. Based. <laughs> Oof. Ah, uh, I hope so, brother. <laughs> Guest? Yeah? Literally what he just said? She's a reporter? Huh? <laughs> Synchronized hunt? Ah, uh, insurance seller. That's unlucky. Space sickness accident. Uh, I mean, when when space becomes a viable work environment, of course insurance is gonna get there. Insurance is always good. Oh, they're getting bribed to join the insurance. Multiple salesmen. Tanabe! It's not... Now <laughs> Ooh. Again, I guess it is a really dangerous job, so... Having a well-written... Tanabe, dude. I was so off. <laughs> yeah, it's fair enough. No. They made their money. I mean, I do think insurance is a good thing to have, in general. <laughs> Obviously, levels depend on your job and life, but yeah. Uh... <laughs> Bro, they're just everywhere. <laughs> this girl, I think she's friends or was friends with Hachi. Hey, the pilot guy, right? Dude, I, I, 
I'm bad at talking to people who are like super pushy like this. I'd probably give in, honestly. <laughs> I'm just bad at telling people off. Oh. Classic name. If it was so simple. Oh, they pee in that? Wait, what is that for? If they have the urinal. That's a pee those in the urinal and up that to the waste tank. <laughs> don't play this at my funeral. Oh, don't don't take a pee at that hot cheese roll. Wait. His design for a spaceship? Oh. Huh? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Fair enough. I get that point. I'd probably write a will. <laughs> Even if I don't really consider myself like a family man too much. I think that's just a nice sentiment. Especially on a good look. <laughs> on a super dangerous job, though. But I got both of their points of view. If you're dead, like, it doesn't really matter. If you don't really care about that stuff. Good luck. Sketch boy. New nickname just dropped. Normally changing nickname for him. It's definitely an interesting topic. To think about. <laughs> yeah. Her voice sounds familiar. Lucy's. I'm kind of tempted to check that out at the end of the episode. Hey! <laughs> Chen Shin doing good, eh? Parakeet. Oh, so they just... So he takes care of other people, other crew members' pets down there. I was wondering what that was about. Fair enough. This this captain shit seems to be a very cool character. <laughs> He's so over it. Have to read that yellow on the review. I can't concentrate. Hey, the hot one. <laughs> Fair enough. But it's also like giving money as a gift for Christmas or a birthday. It's always good, but it also makes it feel like they're lacking in ideas. <laughs> Yo, she's going she's going to work though. Oh. 
Love. <laughs> uh... yeah, you're not winning her over. Maybe Hachi in the long run. <laughs> I I actually feel like feel like they might get together at by the end of it. They're opposites, but they vibe really well. Dilemma. See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. <laughs> Base. Taking it literally. Sunglass and the earplugs. Oh no. <laughs> oh. Poor girl. <laughs> no, I guess if it conveys a certain thing. Like a video letter, I guess, is what she means. <laughs> mm. Yeah, fair enough, Hachi. You don't know about personal lives. Oh. Okay. Uh, someone got it? Cleared? Did someone get it already? Is it debris clear? And I can't fully see. Oh my god. Relax. I guess they would go hard on the debris section since it is the the biggest, riskiest section, right? I love how they're just not talking to her, though. Oh, and then speak of the devil. <laughs> I like her. Stone cold. Yeah? Hot girl. <laughs> Honestly, you might as well just go with her. I like the effort she's putting in. She has a little tact using her wiles. Oh, it's the Dray. Oh, we did see this in preview. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> it wasn't debris clear. Space Bureau, 2024. Wow, okay, yeah, and it's 2075, so 51 years. That's crazy. I bet Space Bureaus will be a thing too, lady. I mean, they probably, do they do it for astronauts? Maybe, but maybe it'll be more of a common thing. That is a touchy piece of debris. Maybe return it to the family? Yeah. 
<laughs> Harsh, but true. It tried to crash into something. <laughs> I agree more with Hachi. If it's your job, it's your job, right? It's not like it's... I guess it's more morally bad. I mean, it's probably on the same level with the plaque, honestly. Yeah, just send it to them. It's a tin. Oh. Okay. Fatherland. Mummified. Oh. Oh, that's a great answer. Or, uh, uh. I thought there was the yeah, action I was thinking. Uh, I mean, made sense. Ah, that's rough, I guess. See, wills, wills can hurt for sure. Such a touchy thing. I don't have a well, um, but. <laughs> oh. Just reburying him in space. Whoa, it's not your place to say that. Well, you know, she's very passionate about her morals, but it's not their call. It's kind of like, oh, and she's yoinking it. Bro, then I feel like this should be a fireball offense. I feel like going a going commando in a space setting is like so dangerous. I think I obviously you see what Tanabe is saying, but it's definitely just not her place to say. She's too innocent, man. So headstrong. <laughs> but he wanted to be in space. And his family wants him in space. Yeah. What? <laughs> True.
Yeah. Miracle Enjoyer? I, re I respect that though. <laughs> oh! What? Oh, it's just a painting. Yeah? Nah, no, I'm conflicted too, Hachi. It was a good speech, but... How would you know if he... Like, maybe he just really wanted to just be buried in space. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Oh, uh, hey, she's still there. Oh, they're dead. Okay, she got. She got it. Deserved. Deserved. She hunted fine. <laughs> Lovers. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Interesting episode, man. I like this, how they're just tackling these... These questions that make you think a lot. How this one was just on wills. And it's really good because... You, it makes, because you can see both sides perfectly, and I'm even conflicted on what exactly I think of it. I, I want to talk after the credits, though. Just as, you know, kind of deep. Uh, let's look at voice acting, though. Uh, characters. Who are we going to do? Zero favorites for Phillips and two favorites for Arvind. My boys. <laughs> Unlucky at us. Da, 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 da. Aww, the, telling me the, the saleswoman isn't there? How? Unlucky. Bro, they don't even have the secretary? Uh, 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 preview. What's that? What's that part of the job? Oh, Colin Clifford. Yo. Seen though. Uh, this guy seems like a pleasant guy. Wow. What a what a guy, huh? Alright. Hold up. Hold up before we start the review. I feel like this is another my anime list L, cause I don't know, man. They Wait, well, where, where's the side characters? Oh wait, they do have we'll just I mean there isn't really a character that important. We'll do the secretary girl. No, 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 uh, no, um, no insurance saleswoman. Uh, but we'll do that after. So let's do, 
let's talk about this episode. So yeah, I really liked how this is structured, right? You know, it's it's space and they do deal with these with the space theme problems, but there usually is like this one one problem that really like really makes you think like last episode was um it was like dreams and, you know, state nation and how to deal with that, I guess. This one was like last wills and what makes a good last will. Um, you know, it was interesting because, and then this is the future, but it made sense that they would be forced to uh, write a last will on a space station since it is a more dangerous job than average. And obviously the debris collectors are um, probably the most dangerous out of all of them. Um, and you know, what makes for a good last will? It's definitely an interesting conversation. I myself haven't written a last will. I don't really need it at this point in my life, but um, it's interesting because I agree with Tanabe on a lot of the points. I do feel like it is important to write one and for it to have meaning. Um, at the same time, I, I get I get why Hachi, you know, if you're not too connected with your parents or people who would receive it, then why does it matter? Your dad, it's not like your problem anyways. Um, I just, I just feel a little sentimental because even if I, I wouldn't call myself like a super family person, but I still feel like it's a, it's a good gesture, you know, writing a will on a principle, but I guess it really just depends how your, how your life ends up. And then I agree more with, like, Tana, or not Tanabe, Hachi at the end, where, you know, Tanabe gives this great speech, and it does end up changing the daughter's mind. But, you know, a lot of that was just her putting her morals and dreams into this situation, right? Like, like Hachi said, like, it was so, it was such a powerful speech in you. And even though I kind of disagreed with it, I still, like kind of fell for it so i understand and she and she just kind of took control of this situation and it, you know it's just props for her for being so passionate it's just her character um how she is really firm on her beliefs and morals and would speak up for anyone who would like question it but i do think like like the die as well was to be buried in space and even though her speech was beautiful, her, 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 her logic was that her, his body miraculously came back to earth. So that means he must have regretted his, uh, his decision. It's a little, it's, I don't know. It, it, it leaves a weird taste in my mouth. It's like, almost like just putting aside his, his wishes. The saying that in the end, he felt wronged about it. It feels sort of weird about someone's own will. But I, I guess that's a point. And, you know, there is a big difference between Hachi's and this guy's situation, of course. Like, obviously, there's connections. While Hachi does uh, sympathize with the dieters, he also feels like, um, you know, how space is everything to him. And I would imagine he would like a space burial. But the difference, I guess, is this guy did have a family. And he clearly loved them. While Hachi seems more alone than not. Obviously, he doesn't have a great relationship with his father so um so there's differences in that and you know it's not like we know the answer like maybe tanabe is right about the regret but but you know while, while he's launched it's not like he he he, he like slowly died while he was on the pod and he's like shit i shouldn't have done this it's like he wrote his will while he was dying then he died then he went into the pod yet i don't know maybe his soul's crying to return back to earth but it just feels like oh, i don't know <laughs> and that's why this show's so good it's so uh so conflicting today i, I want to say it's almost like disrespectful to the guy just to push your own morals onto him um and basically like without that speech the daughter would have just let it go and I don't know, maybe maybe space was more important to him than his family. Maybe they were both, like, equally important to his life. That's why he took the photo of his family, but chose to, like, remain in space because he cared about them both deeply. It's just, like, such an interesting thing to think about. <laughs> I don't know, man. It, but regardless, you can't, uh, 
It was definitely a powerful scene. Her speech, for sure. I felt, felt the raw emotion in her. And, you know, again, props to her voice actor. Shion Myung's voice actor. Killing it. Killing it, for sure. Yeah, I don't know. Like, 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 like if, uh, if the captain didn't share that video, the audio feed or in video feed, I, I'd imagine the daughter wouldn't have taken her back. It's just power of a, uh, power of a uh, voice acting. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's interesting, interesting stuff. How, I, how I agree with Tanabe on the first part where I do think a will is important, but at the same time. The will's important, so you should respect it in certain ways, you know. I guess there's some circumstances where a will might demand something, like, it's, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's great, though. And, of course, we got the other, the insurance talk, um, which is more the comedic aspect of this episode, right? And, again, it made sense. Um, I, Well, it's insurance month, so... Or week. I think it was a week. Um, so, again, dangerous job. Uh, it, w it would make sense that insurance brokers would be um, super, like, all over it. And I love how they're, like, giving gifts to you. Like, oh, choose me, choose me, take these free gifts. Um, I mean, it made sense, right? They make their livelihood off, like, what are they, like, commissions off uh, per clientele, per plan. Um, I do think it's important <laughs> to have insurance, especially, again, it depends, but, um, if you're in a life, life, uh, endangering job, I think maybe insurance is pretty important. I guess if it depends if you have money to give, but, yeah, <laughs> uh, it, it's good comedy, um, insurance, sexy insurance lady, I think it was, like, awesome, like, how a, a ton of it was, like, Tanabe and uh, Hachi's conversation at the beginning, how like, he'll never get a man, and then Hachi's like almost dreamer like scenario where a woman would want him, and then the the hot insurance lady comes in and does that. I thought it would have been something different. Like I didn't think it should just be selling insurance. So that was that was funny. <laughs> um, and just like uh, how how it just clowny it gets when you know they're trying to ignore and they're just setting up speeches and shit. But I I respect the insurance lady, you know. Um, again, it's your livelihood. It's annoying. I would probably fold not just because she's hot, but just because I'm I'm really bad at it. It reminds me of a story when I first went to Singapore, and I took a walk in the morning without my group because they're all sleeping, and I don't I just naturally don't sleep too much like. I usually sleep only like five hours. So I was just up in the morning, went through like a worst decision of my life, went through like a sales, like a store streetway and just people just keep pulling you over. And I did give up. I did buy a scarf for my mom because it, from a close store that was just so pushy and it turned out good. She, she, she's a scarf enjoyer. So, um, it worked out, but <laughs> I'm just, I'm just weak to it, man. I just feel bad for them, almost, which you shouldn't, but yeah, I'm just horrible at handling in general, too. Like, Singapore, oh, they can't really call it a handling country. I guess just, there's handling areas in it, right? Same with Japan. Um, wish I, wish I had a more, more of a backbone for that, but yeah. Uh, that's good, man. They, they met like some some like deep deep thinking stuff with some good co comedic stuff some you know high emotional stuff with ton of a speech at the end um it's just such such a such a thonker thonker show man it's fun and i i wonder what ta we never did see what tanabe's last will was we just know that she was going to send love in her will um and I guess you can just assume, assume what that is through, just assume it, like, we don't need it, but I feel like it would have been pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> and we saw more of the secretary, which we're gonna check out her uh, voice actor, 
whose name I don't remember. Actually, it's oh wow, it's a very small repertoire. Ed Edeladard, who you know, got some time to shine. We don't really see her too much. She's she's like the told, but comedic, kind of funny, funny character. Not not like funny in the show, but just her attitude is kind of funny to me. Um, got a little more Yuri too. I feel like he's. He's an interesting character. He takes care of other crew members' pets. Like, not just his, like, people at the debris section. It looks like he takes care of just general crew members' pets, which is interesting. And then I'm sure we'll learn about all of them in the future. Maybe. It seems like Philip and Arvid is kind of comedic relief. More, they, they fit the role. And, you know, Hachi's that too, but they feel more, more pseudo, not pseudo, like, solely comedic, but... Could be wrong. <laughs> um, yeah. And of course, Cap Captain, what, what's her name? Fee? Or Fee or Fae? Always, always like that cool character. I, I really like her. She might be like my favorite of the side characters. Just how like, just her attitude, man. <laughs> like, I know I keep saying cool, but I feel like that's just the best, uh, best descriptor for her. But let's move on to voice actors. We talked a bit. Um, Ito Maiko is Ed Ledar's, Ed Edogard's voice actress. Very small repertoire. Nine roles. <laughs> Eight roles, I guess, because there's du uh, seven roles because there's duplicates. So you might check out someone else. No Fun Facts, uh, born 1975. Doesn't voice act anymore. Uh, really doesn't have any characters. She's that I know. <laughs> Nothing really notable. Uh, Amami Mamoru from Yusha O Dao Dai Dar. Seven favorites main character. Ro Roba Esper from Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters. He's one of the three uh, three sighted guys with Jinzo. I, I know that. But yeah, yeah. Ed Lod Edo guards her top top character in favorites. As we didn't shut someone else then. Or do we... We kind of have to, I mean, maybe, maybe we'll go to a different site. Maybe we can find more voice actors. Because my anime list is kind of lacking for the sides. And side characters are important, guys. Uh, I forgot what, is it, bef it's not behind voice, uh, maybe behind voice actors. Uh, I'm, I'm just like, yeah. Wait, yeah, yeah. Okay, we can do insurance saleswoman base. Thank you, thank you. Vo voiced by Rumiko Ukai. And then we, we be... Uh, should I? I mean, I kind of don't like how this uh, this site is formatted, but... So, Ru Rumiko Ukai, May 24th, no date for whatever reason. Voiceover... Known for Fra Brow and Miyamoto Usagi from Fate? Okay, what has she done that we know? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing so far. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, Miyamoto Usa Usagi. Not, okay. Right, Bunny. Really? That's one of her, her top characters? Okay, so she's she's more low key. Let's see what she is on my anime list. Another another smaller, smaller repertoire, but you know, gotta respect them for putting in the work. Oh, nineteen fifty five. Yeah, she's she's a little older. Born in Fukuoka. Better repertoire than uh, than uh, Edo guards. <laughs> Anything we know though. Or I know. Bofra from, oh, one of the older Gundams. Right. Yeah, just a lot of Bofra. Respectfully. Okay, I mean, kind of a, more of a dud, but I, I like to give a shout out to the voice acting talent. You know, voice acting is, I, I value it a lot, actually, in my in the anime in general. I feel like I... It's not something I really appreciated in my teens when I watched anime a lot, but I do a lot now because it really 
Like there there are stellar performances that just like that just really make a scene. Like in this episode, Tanabe's speech was so good and I know that her voice actor is just a quality quality actress because she does Xion. She she does Mian and Xian who has uh which was a great performance too. So I, I just like giving respect where I think it's deserved. And just highlighting uh lesser known ones. But anyways, guys, this was episode three of Planetas. Of course, it was great. Might be my favorite episode yet, though. I, I really just loved, loved, loved how much thought I was, th like how how much I was thinking of wills and stuff. It was it was really fun. I it's been a while since I've uh, had something so thought provoking. I guess Boogie Pop twenty nineteen was also thought provoking, but it was it was in a different way. Right, it wasn't like these toy concepts. Um, it was more, it was a little more abstract. Also, a good, good anime. I think it's underrated. You can watch my reactions on the channel if you're interested. Um, but apparently the book, the light novels are godlike, and it's definitely something I want to tackle in a in uh twenty next year. 2023 not that it matters why am i talking about this i don't know i'm rambling but yeah guys thanks for watching hopefully you enjoyed and hopefully i see you again in the future peace